Hello again everyone. In this video we're going to take a look at a very important concept inside of an Oracle database. That's called a foreign key. And the whole concept of a foreign key... Oh boy, my handwriting is so bad. The whole concept of a foreign key is when you define it on a table... Draw a table here. And I'm going to have some column here. When you define a foreign key on a table, you're saying that data cannot be entered into this table unless that data already exists in some other table. So before I can insert data into table 1, table 2. If I have a foreign key defined here, the only way I can insert something here is if that information exists in this other table. Let's look at an example. Let's say I have an employee table. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this guy out. No, I don't want to see. So let's take a look at this. Let's say I have an employee table. Oops. Got to change my pen color. Okay, I have my employee table. What are the things I'm, am I going to store inside my employee table? I'm going to have stuff like, obviously, emp. Last name, and first name, um, social security number, phone number, a whole bunch of other things. A whole bunch of other stuff. And one of the things that I'm going to store inside this employee table, and again, I'm going to draw a box around it, is something called a department ID. If you've seen the other videos, particularly the one that I've created on uh, normalization, I want to cut down on redundancy as much as possible inside of our database. We want to normalize our database. And one of the ways that we can normalize our database is to cut down on redundant information by breaking the different pieces out into separate entities in different tables in this example. So I could store the department name, whether it's uh, you know executive, VP, retail, janitorial, whatever it is I'm talking about. I could store that here in the employee table, but there's a couple of problems with that. Number one, I'm restoring a lot of um, redundant string-based information. Oracle handles numbers a heck of a lot better than it handles string information, so that's one thing. The second part is data entry. What happens when people start entering data and they spell things a little differently? So one person writes out vice president, the other person just puts in VP. Now we have inconsistent data inside of our uh, employee table where we really mean the same thing and when it comes time to query that information we're not going to get consistent data. If we uh, define all of that stuff in a department table and have all of those different values in there it's much more consistent. Uh, employees can pick if they're using an application to enter new employee information they can pick from a drop-down box and the drop-down box will just query the department table and we'll have stuff like department ID and department name, and maybe, you know, something else like location or whatever it is. But for this example, I'm just going to keep it simple. So we'll have uh, department 10 is executive, department 20 is IT, department 30, janitorial, department 40 is retail. So I can store that information here as, as part of my employee table. Now, this is obviously going to be our candidate to have a foreign key on. The foreign key basically says the only way I'm going to allow people to insert information into my employee table is if they insert a value that exists somewhere in my department table. It has to exist here. If I try to input a department ID of 50, I'm not going to be able to do that because there is no 50 here in my department table. If I try to put in 41, 
it's not going to let me do it because there is no department 41. The only way I'm going to be able to enter information is if it exists in this other table. So this guy is going to be my foreign key. So department ID is going to be a foreign key and it's going to point to this column in my department table. Let's take a look in SQL Plus. I keep calling it SQL Plus. Let's take a look in SQL Developer and I'm going to connect to my local database here. And I'm going to take a look at my HR schema as I've been doing in all my videos up to this point. So as soon as this query is back, I'm going to hop into other users, and then we'll take a look at my HR schema, and we'll take a look at the different tables that are out there. So you can see that I have this departments table, I also have this employees table. So let's take a look at employees and gather some information about that guy. So these are my different columns, and just like in the example that I was showing a second ago, here's your department ID. You can see there's also a manager ID that's going to point to uh, employee IDs. It's going to be a foreign key inside this uh, table. Anything that has an ID field that's not part of the primary key is probably going to be a foreign key to some other table. So just looking at this, obviously employee ID is going to be the unique identifier, the primary key for this particular table. Department ID, that's probably a good candidate. That's probably a f good um, candidate to be a foreign key to some other table. Let's see the way that this is defined. So if I take a look at the constraints that are out there, you can call your constraint anything you want. But in this case, uh, it was called Employee Department Foreign Key. And you can see that I can see a list of all the different constraint types that are out there. So in this case, I have three foreign keys in this table. I have Employee Job FK, which is a foreign key, out to probably either Jobs or Job History. I would guess it probably goes to the Jobs table. Uh, the manager foreign key, which is going to be a foreign key back to itself because our managers are going to be defined within the employees table. And we have this foreign key that points to, looks like a good candidate, it's probably pointing to department. We can see all of the information that goes through here and it doesn't have a search condition. And you can see that, what is it pointing to? It's pointing to HR departments. It's pointing to the primary key that's part of my department ID. The primary key that's part of department uh, my departments table is going to be my department ID. And you can see that I have all of these other things that I can do. I can defer the constraint, so I can uh, validate, I can disable a particular constraint. I have all of these different things that are available to me as part of my constraints. So now that we know that this guy has a foreign key on departments, I can look at my departments here. I'll query all of the data that goes along with that. And you can see all the department IDs end in 0. We don't have anything that uh, that ends in a 1 or a 5, so we got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Real easy to remember. So now if I go back to employees and I try to insert a row, I'm going to hit the little plus sign here. I'm going to insert a row. I'm just going to put in different numbers. I'll put in myself. not my real phone number, so please don't call that number asking me for questions. Uh, let's see, I'll put in today as my hire date. Give myself a nice fat salary. Woo! Why not? Commission percentage 0 0.1. Manager ID 100. Here's the department ID. If I try to enter something that doesn't exist in departments, it's going to kick it out. So I'm purposely going to put in 55, something that doesn't end in a 0. And now I'm going to try to go and I'm going to try to commit that record. Try to commit that record to the database. And I'm going to get an error message. So uh, not only did I violate, I violated the unique constraint here of the employee ID, oh, because I didn't scroll down and look at all the numbers. So let's go back here to the row I was trying to insert. Where did it go? So I violated this 
uh, constraint on the table for 150. So let's put in a number really high so it doesn't conflict with anybody else. We'll put in 400. I'll try to commit it to the database. And what does it say? Integrity constraint violated, parent key not found. So I tried to insert that information. I tried to run this insert command into employees. And you can see that I put in all my information of what I try to enter. There's 400, Ostrowski, Chris, all my different pieces of information. But when I tried to put 55 in there, it went, nope, not going to let you do it. The foreign key doesn't exist. 55 does not exist in the uh, employees table. So let's scroll down here again. And let me go back and try to find myself. There I am again. So now if I put in a good value, I'll put in something like 80. Oops. I'll commit those records again. Commit successful. So I was able to insert myself into this table using 80 as a department ID because that is a valid department ID, whereas 55 wasn't. So foreign keys allow you to maintain data in integrity inside your database after you've normalized your database, after you've kind of broken up the different entities into their own discrete pieces, into their own discrete tables inside your Oracle database. And again, this isn't just for Oracle. This is for any relational database. Once you've broken all, broken all of those pieces into their unique entities, you can then use foreign keys to make sure that the data that's going into your database is accurate.